Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to talk about engraving a one gallon Arctic jug on a pie burn version 4. I recently had an order uh, come in that they wanted some one gallon jugs engraved with their company logo and I had not engraved any one gallon jugs uh, at all. And so went ahead, ordered one just to see if it would work on the rotary and uh, let them know what I found out. And come to find out, engraving a one gallon Arctic jug on a Pyburn version four is a piece of cake. You don't have to do anything different. And so I'm gonna step you through that process. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways you can go about engraving something like this. And uh, let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go jump into Lightburn, lay out the template right quick um, this is going to be my test bottle, so I'll go ahead and put my logo on it just to uh, make sure everything's working okay. We'll talk a little bit about steps per rotation. I see a lot in the forums where people are really confused about steps per rotation. So we're going to talk a little bit about that on when you have to change them, when you don't, those kind of things. So before we get to Lightburn, let's talk a little bit about steps. The first thing that I will tell you is there's a number of different ways on how to determine your steps per rotation on your rotary. And the reason why that's important that you determine that is if uh, wh whatever you have illustrated in Lightburn, let's say that you wanted a logo that was going to be five inches wide by two inches tall. If you don't have your steps set properly, what will happen is what you see in Lightburn is not what you're going to see on your tumbler they you need to have those synced and so uh, the idea of dialing in your steps um, is an important process uh, when it comes to a rotary because what you see in Lightburn is what you want to see on your tumbler so let's talk a little bit about steps to determine your steps I would follow the instructions in the pie burn manual uh, to dial in your proper steps per rotation. And the real question becomes, well, do I ever need to change it when I'm changing my bottle size or my tumbler size? And if so, when do I have to change it? So let's talk a little bit about that. The key is that if I am, this is a, just a 30 ounce regular uh, tumbler. And the key is whatever you're putting on the drive wheels of the tumbler, so the drive wheels will, will sit right here. If this diameter is the same as what you're engraving, your steps per rotation will not have to change, whether it's a 30 ounce tumbler, a 20 ounce tumbler, it really doesn't matter. Basically, what, whatever you're putting on the drive wheels of the rotary, if that diameter that's on the drive wheels of the rotary are the same as where you're engraving, you don't have to change your steps per rotation, regardless of its size. Um, good example would be a sports bottle where you have a reduced neck. That's when you're going to have to change your steps or flip the bottle about, around, whichever you prefer. This Arctic tumbler, or uh, this Arctic one gallon jug, you notice that I'm going to put this on the drive wheels of the rotary. And therefore, because what's sitting on the drive wheels of the rotary is greatly different in diameter size compared to what we're going to engrave, I have to dial in my steps. Now you have the ability if you want to turn it around 180 degrees to do it that way, that works too and you won't have to turn uh, change your steps because what's sitting on the drive wheels of the rotary is the same diameter as that is. You will have to uh, uh, take the, uh, some things off your rotary to do it that way, and you have the possibility of some slippage. With these being well over $40 raw cost, um, I prefer to just go ahead and figure out what my steps per rotation is, document it on my Lightburn file, and go from there. Matter of fact, when we get into Lightburn, I'll show you how I make sure that I remember to change my steps. I put it right in the template. So when I pull it out from my art library, it's gonna stick out saying, hey, you've gotta change your steps per rotation for this particular deal. The benefit of doing that is I can use the spring clamp on the inside of this and very rarely will I have any slippage. Um, when I turn it around and just set it on the rollers, um, there's always a possibility that you could have a little slippage. But whichever you'd prefer, 
there's always more than one way to do it. So um, that's just a little bit of information on when you have to uh, uh, calculate your steps per rotation. If this diameter is different than what's what you're engraving on, and this is the uh, sitting on the drive wheels of the rotary, you have to change your steps. Let's go to Lightburn and we'll get this started. So to get us started on our design, I'm going to go to our rotary setup here and the engraving diameter on the bottom of that jug is six inches. So I plugged in my six inches for my object diameter. It calculated 18.8495 as my circumference. Remember that these settings don't do anything in your software. This is just a, an aid to help you calculate the template that you need to make. So this 18.895 this number here is going to be the height of the rectangle that you generate. So we've got this all okay. You'll also notice the steps that I determined for this particular one gallon Arctic jug is uh, 5260 is what worked great for me. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, catalog that setting and I'm going to set it up on my template. And so what I did is I generated my rectangle that is 18.849 tall, and then the width is going to be the engraving width. So from the shoulder of the curve on the top of the jug to the bottom where you want to stop your engraving, that in this case is going to be seven and a half inches. And so my rectangle, this just gives me my, um, my template, dropped in my graphic in the middle, I always use user origin and bottom, excuse me, middle right. If you're on a pie burn, you want that origin to be right here. So you will set your origin right to the top of the shoulder where it makes sense for you. And so you might wonder, well, gee, I don't want to forget my steps anytime I do this the next time. The way I handle that is when I go into my art library and I go to my Tumblr templates, if I drag out this one gallon Arctic, it's ready to go. And you'll notice that I put the steps as part of my, my, uh, my template. And then usually what I'll do is I'll go in and change my steps. And then I can delete this because it doesn't affect your, your, your template at all. And that way I can remember that when I am using this template, hey, I've got to change those steps or it's not going to work. So that's typically how I do that, is I'll come in here, I'll just go in, I'll change my steps, and then a lot of times I'll just either ungroup this and get rid of it or turn it off either way uh, to do it. Um, but it's real easy, and that way you don't have to worry about um, missing what steps you need for this particular jug. And uh, then once you do that and get your artwork all done, then it's a matter of setting it up just exactly like you would do any other tumbler and uh, go to burning it. So um, my setting for my Nova 35 100 watt uh, that I use for almost all of my tumblers, and it worked great for this one as well, is 400 millimeters per second, 35% power, uh, air assist off. And... Uh, so yeah, uh, treat it just like any other tumbler. You, you really don't have to do anything. The only thing that you have to do is establish your steps if that's what you want to do. Uh, the other option is to flip it around 180 degrees, but you're going to have to take some parts off the rotary to do that. And be sure to put something like a roll of quarters or something like that in that bottle to make sure it doesn't slip. There's not really anything I needed to do as far as modifying uh, the Pyburn version 4 before I put this one gallon Arctic jug in here. I loaded it just like I would any other tumbler. I've got this carriage all the way down. Um, you can see that I've got this edge right on the rollers. I brought in the uh, this backing plate. I brought it all the way to the edge here. And a great feature about the Pyburn 4 is you have the ability to do that. And the other thing is that you'll notice that I've got a level up here and it, uh, the, the bottom of the uh, jug is slightly higher uh, than perfect leveled. Well, to be honest with you, most of the things that I set in my rotary, 
I want the bottom just slightly higher than I do the, the uh, top. It keeps it from walking. And so actually, uh, this is perfect. I don't have to do anything. Um, it fits great. Now, of course, I've got to drop it down and get all the alignment done. But you can see uh, that it fits in there great. The other thing that I did is I tightened up this spring clamp just a little bit to make sure I've got plenty of tension on the neck here. And uh, this bottle fits great, or this jug fit, fits great in here. No problem at all. Uh, you'd establish your steps. And uh, once you have your steps, you can go to light burn, go ahead and get your template generated and uh, burn it just like you would any other tumbler. I've got the template all done and sent to the uh, controller here. And so I've established my origin right here. And so my engraving surface is gonna basically start here and I ended it right at this line. And so this is my seven and half inch engraving area and I'm ready to go. So we'll go ahead and set this up and uh, I can show you what it looks like when it's engraving. Okay, we've got her all loaded up. Let's uh, touch this thing off and uh, see what she looks like. I thought I'd show you the other way. So if you didn't want to mess with your steps per rotation and you wanted to keep your steps as they normally would be, you'll have to remove the spring clamp and it's just one screw on the back side of this spring clamp. Take out the whole assembly. Go ahead and put your, because this diameter is going on the dry wheels of the roller um, as the same as what you're engraving, you don't have to change your steps. So if I just uh, set them in here like this and then bring your height control up to sit on the rim and uh, make sure she's level. That all looks good. And then the other thing that I would do is, you know, you, you put your origin over here instead of over here and make sure to rotate your design 180 degrees and you're good to go. Um, I would definitely strongly recommend you put something inside with a little bit of weight uh, to keep that from slipping. The spring clamp does a great job uh, from keeping it from slipping and you don't have that when you remove this. So you just need a little bit of weight but you can see that you can flip it 180 degrees and I'm sure it would work fine uh, that way. And uh, so yeah, there you go. I hope this information was helpful. If, uh, if you like the video, I'd sure appreciate a like. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you have the ability, if you can hit that thanks button and contribute to the channel, I'd sure appreciate it. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.